Welcome guys, here's an eye-opening exploration with David Wood as he uncovers shocking evidence that the Quran may not be divinely inspired. Get ready to dive into historical texts and scholarly insights that suggest the Quran contains plagiarized content from earlier sources. Stay tuned for a compelling analysis that challenges what many believe to be the truth. Remember how you know, this Hulk guy was, uh, you know, when he was a human, he went around shopping for a stretchable underwear, uh, knowing obviously he'll need that when the time moment occurs. So uh, then somebody who doesn't know what we're talking about will think we're referring to actual persons, but you know that we're referring to a person in a movie or, or in a Marvel Comics uh, description. In a similar way, when the Quran is talking about Jesus in a particular way, it could be something based on history, it could be something based on the previous literature. It's calling the attention of the people to the story and drawing out the Quranic lessons. Did you just catch Shabir comparing stories in the Quran about people like Jesus and so on to maybe it's just talking about, as you and I would talk about, um, the Hulk or something like that, Marvel heroes. Muslims believe that the Quran was revealed to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel, but many of Muhammad's contemporaries were convinced that he was copying earlier stories, some of which were fables, and passing them off as divine revelations. Interestingly, 14 centuries after Muhammad's critics repeatedly accused him of plagiarizing fables, Muslim scholars are starting to agree. Let's find out why. In Surah 18, we read about the sleepers of the cave, a group of people who supposedly went to sleep in a cave and woke up 300 years later. This fable goes back to people like Bishop Stephen of Ephesus around the middle of the 5th century. It was popular among the Christians of Arabia. They knew it wasn't true. They treated the story as a fable. But now it's in the Quran, and more than a billion people believe that it really happened. According to Surah 19, Jesus began preaching as soon as he came out of Mary's womb. This story comes from the 6th century Arabic infancy gospel. The story of Satan refusing to bow down to Adam in Surah 15 comes from the 1st century Jewish apocryphal work, The Life of Adam and Eve. The story of a bird teaching Cain how to bury his brother in Surah 5 comes from Mishnah Sanhedrin. The tale of Solomon talking to animals in Surah 27 comes from the second Targum of the Book of Esther. The legend of Mary giving birth under a palm tree in Surah 19 comes from an apocryphal work called The History of the Nativity of Mary and the Savior's Infancy, written in the early 600s. The account of Jesus giving life to clay birds in Surah 5 comes from a second century work called The Infancy Gospel of Thomas. One of the most conspicuous legends in the Quran is the story of Dhul Karnain. In Surah 18, Allah says that Dhul Karnain traveled west and found the place where the sun sets, traveled east and found the place where the sun rises, built a big wall to keep out the hordes of Gog and Magog. We know where this story comes from. It comes from what's called the Alexander Romance, collections of legends about Alexander the Great. There are Muslims who will leave Islam if you can get them to read the Alexander Romance and then show them what the Quran says about Dhul Karnain. Musa Sarantonio, for instance, was an ISIS recruiter. While he was in prison, he read the legends about Alexander the Great and he noticed the parallels with Dhul Karnain in the Quran. What happened then, Musa tells us in an interview with The Atlantic. Realizing that Dhul Karnain was not at all a real person, but was rather based on a fictional account of Alexander the Great, instantly left me with only one possible conclusion. The Quran was not divinely inspired, he wrote. It had taken Alexander the Great fan fiction as fact. Of course, I would have preferred to have discovered all that 17 years ago and avoided much trouble. He has therefore abandoned not only ISIS, but Islam and religion as a whole. He is an atheist and admires the God Delusion author Richard Dawkins. So, some Muslims react to legends in the Quran by concluding that the Quran is not from God. But other Muslims have a different reaction. Muslim scholars like Shabir Ali believe that it's perfectly acceptable for the Quran to use fables to teach lessons, just as we, in our time, 
can discuss what happened in a Marvel film without believing that we're discussing real events. Now, it is true that some things that the Quran says are, are not going to be suitable to Christians because they don't find those, those in their Gospels and they think that these come from apocryphal sources. Why should we trust that? But I've explained, and you've heard me, uh, so there's no need to repeat, but because David has raised the question again, the point is this. The Quran is referring to what people already know. It's like if we, we say to you, um, you know, remember how you know, this Hulk guy was... Uh, you know, when he was a human, he went around shopping for a stretchable underwear, and knowing obviously he'll need that when the time moment occurs. So uh, then somebody who doesn't know what we're talking about will think we're referring to actual persons, but you know that we're referring to a person in a movie or, or in a Marvel Comics uh, description. In a similar way, when the Quran is talking about Jesus in a particular way, it could be something based on history, it could be something based on the previous literature. It's calling the attention of the people to the story and drawing out the Quranic lessons. Did you just catch Shabir comparing stories in the Quran about people like Jesus and so on to, maybe it's just talking about, as you and I would talk about, um, the Hulk or something like that, Marvel heroes. Well. If that's the case, then when the Quran tells us that uh, the Jews thought they killed him, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, maybe this is just a kind of comic book story that we're not supposed to take seriously. Muhammad Assad held a similar view of the legends we find in the Quran. In Assad's commentary on his translation of the Quran, we read numerous passages declaring it should always be remembered that all Quranic references to historical or legendary events, whether described in the Bible or in the oral tradition of pre-Islamic Arabia, are invariably meant to elucidate a particular lesson in ethics and not to narrate a story as such. And this explains the fragmentary character of these references and allusions. Regarding the legend of the sleepers of the cave, Assad writes, but whatever the source of this legend, and irrespective of whether it is of Jewish or Christian origin, the fact remains that it is used in the Quran in a purely parabolic sense, namely as an illustration of God's power to bring about death or sleep and resurrection or awakening, and secondly as an allegory of the piety that induces men to abandon a wicked or frivolous world in order to keep their faith unsullied and of God's recognition of that faith by his bestowal of a spiritual awakening which transcends time and death. What I find most interesting when Muslim scholars admit that the Quran is filled with myths, fables, and legends is that this is exactly what the people around Muhammad said when he started delivering these revelations. Muhammad's contemporaries recognized these stories in the Quran as myths, fables, and legends even according to the Quran. Surah 6, verse 25. When they come to thee to dispute with thee, the infidels say, Verily, this is nothing but fables of the ancients. Surah 8, verse 31. And when our signs were being recited to them, they said, We have already heard. If we wished, we could say the like of this. This is naught but the fairy tales of the ancients. Surah 25, verses 4 to 5. Those who disbelieve say, this is not but a lie that he hath invented, and other folk have helped him with it, so that they have produced a slander and a lie. And they say, fables of the men of old, which he hath had written down, so that they are dictated to him, morn and evening. Surah 68, verse 15. When our signs are recited to him, he says, fairy tales of the ancients. Surah 83, verse 13. Who, when thou readest unto him our revelations, saith, Mere fables of the men of old. So, when Muhammad delivered his revelations about the sleepers of the cave or about Dhul Karnain, the people around him kept saying, We've heard these stories before. We know where these stories come from. These are fables. They're fairy tales. They're bedtime stories. And Muslim scholars are finally starting to agree. Sometimes your first impression is the correct one.